So I stopped at this point as I told you earlier that I can find out density of the film from the critical angle in general and uh, also the roughness of the film from the fall of the intensity profile. But usually these films are also of finite thickness. So what about thickness of the film? Because that's also an important parameter and one would like to know. So then let me go. If I have a film of finite thickness, let us look at this schematic. I have a substrate. This is a substrate. Usually one will deposit a film on this of some thickness, maybe 100 angstrom, maybe 200 angstrom, 1000 angstrom. So now I have an incident beam which gets reflected from the surface. And we know from optics, optics, even optics tells us that whenever there is a refractive index mismatch, index mismatch, there will be the reflection. This is our daily experience even in our windows. Even if the window is transparent, you will find that when you look at it carefully, you can see your image, a light image. Because there is a refractive index mismatch between air and the glass, you will have reflection. So, same thing is true here. The whole phenomenon is taking place at grazing incidence, but the facts are same. So, I have an incident beam which partially gets reflected from the surface and then we have a transmitted beam which gets reflected from the substrate and the film interface here. And I have got one more reflected beam and these two beams they will interfere. Interfere. They will interfere and that interference pattern will be stamped on the reflectivity plot. So quickly let me just tell you mathematically the reflectivity is given by of a finite thick film, finite thickness film. Let me just show it like this. This is a finite thickness film. This is a substrate. So it is given by the d rho z by dz e to the power i q z. The Fourier transform of the density gradient in the z direction. Q is that wave vector transfer dz. This is what I get. Now, if I have a film of constant density of thickness L, let us say, then uh, the density gradient will have two, del two delta functions uh, here. This is the film. This is the film and this is the density. You can see that one delta function will be at the film air interface and the other delta function will be at the film substrate interface. So basically, let me just plot it. You might look. So if I consider rho z, let's say this is a film air interface. It goes, the film goes. Then there is a substrate. This is the density for the substrate. This is the density for the film. And this air has got a refractive index 1. If I differentiate this, this will look once. If I differentiate this, d rho by dz versus z if I do, this will give a delta function here of certain amplitude and the delta function here. There are two delta functions and this L is the thickness of the film. So in that case, the it becomes Rf delta at 0 plus delta at L e to the power i q z dz. So ultimately this comes to Rf delta at 0 gives me 1 
प्लस थ्री पर आई क्यू एल दिस विल बी माई रिफ्लेक्टेड इंटेंसिटी इफ आई हैव अ फिल्म ऑफ फाइन एट थिकनेस नाउ फ्रॉम हियर यू कैन सी वेन एवर क्यू एल इज इक्वल टू ट्वाइस पाई देन दिस बिकम्स टू वेन इट इज पाई इट बिकम्स जीरो एंड सो देर ऑसिलेशंस एंड वेन एवर देर इज क्यू एल इक्वल टू टू पाई यू विल हैव अ पीक इन द रिफ्लेक्टेड इंटेंसिटी सो दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू सो दिस आर इक्वल टू आर एफ इन टू वन plus it is due to iql because there are two delta functions because the reflections are taking from the top and bottom of the film and there will be oscillations and the oscillation width in q space is given by twice pi by l so this so if i call it delta q because twice pi by l 4 pi by l 6 pi by l they will give oscillations so the delta q between the oscillations will be a signature of the thickness of the film and now i show you the example these are experimental examples so this is a fpt film that i had measured and you can see so this is a consolidation the reflection from the top and reflection from the bottom of the interface and that gives me in x this is an xrr profile this is a polarized neutron profile so there are several things that needs to be explained here one is that in case of xrr you can see the kizig oscillation this is a copper k alpha copper k alpha radiation 1.54 angstrom so with this we get this uh oscillation so this is this should have been if for an infinite film it should have been a flat one but here you see these oscillations these are known as kizig oscillations so this is a schematic of the film of iron platinum where the film is of finite thickness and then this is deposited on silicon wafer so silicon substrate and you can see the finite thickness of the film actually gives you this kizig oscillations and from the fitting of this whole data you get thickness of the film here the same film when you use polarized neutron reflectometry one you will have different critical angle for up and for down neutrons plus this same kizig oscillations will be visible on the falling edge of the reflected intensity no kizig oscillation below critical angle because below critical angle the film the uh, the intensity or the beam the radiation does not penetrate the medium so you cannot see any kind of oscillations below critical angle but above critical angle because your beam is now penetrating the film you have got these two components and these are the polarized beam intensities together with the rough uh, together with the thickness signature as kizig oscillations on the falling edge of the reflectivity pattern so by fitting this we get magnetic moment density magnetic moment density density physical density physical density physical density from both xrr and pnr because this gives this gives electron density which can be taken back to physical density this gives nuclear plus magnetic moment density which can be taken back to physical density so i get physical density i get magnetic moment density only from pnr i get interface roughness from both of them so all these parameters have been extracted for these experiments and usually when you make a film the before you take it to polarized neutron reflectometry it makes sense to do the xrr on the same film provided it's a 
high C material film and in not a biological film which has got hydrogenous or deuterium material because in that case XLR will not give you anything. So now I will go one step ahead. So now I talked about infinite medium which gives you Fresnel reflectivity. I gave you finite thickness film, finite thickness. Now what about a film which is actually a repetition of layers. Often we study such films, so that means the film will look somewhat like this. Let's say this is a substrate, I'll call it S, film A of certain thickness D1, A, then film B, not film, layer B, let me call them layers, layer A, layer B of certain thickness D2, then again layer A of D1 thickness, then D2 thickness, and then I continue like this for some time, maybe some tens or twenty such layers are deposited. So this structure, this thin film structure, we often call them thin film heterostructures. In this direction, it's a periodic structure. Periodic structure. You will all agree with me. It's a periodic structure. So typical, let me say, this A can be 100 angstrom, B can be 50 angstrom, so on and so forth. So this is a periodic structure, but the length scales are very different from what you have seen for crystals, crystalline materials. at atomic level. But this periodic structure is also similar to a crystal, uh, I call it a pseudo crystal or you can call it a crystal at mesoscopic length scale. And if there is a crystalline structure, one dimensional crystalline structure, we have seen in our master's day in uh, that for n number of such layers you will have uh, intensity which is sine square n q by 2 upon n q d up by upon sine square q d by 2 and as n goes to infinity this goes to a Bragg p. So this synthetic crystal should also give me Bragg peaks in reflectivity profile. Since this structure is large, so this Bragg peak will come at low Q. Here I must remind you that I have shown you a crystallographic structure for magnetic flux lattice using small angle neutron scattering. That was very similar to a Lowe experiment which you do with crystalline materials uh, which are uh, uh, ordered at atomic level, but that Lowe pattern was seen at low Q region because again vortex lattices are very large in size. I am taking another example here that if I grow such bilayers of periodic nature, then I will see uh, Brad peaks and I am just showing you data, unpolarized neutron reflectometry data from a nickel film and you can clearly see that the, the critical angle the which you have been discussing so far is very much there but the Kiesig oscillations due to finiteness of the film it is there so this is coming because this is a periodic bilayer crystal with 10 bilayers that means I have deposited nickel and titanium in this case nickel and titanium one above another and we have got 10 such bilayers. So the Kiesig oscillation is here due to the total thickness of the film. So there are the so 
there is nickel titanium nickel titanium and 10 such bilayers so there is the total thickness of the thing so the kezik oscillation signify the total thickness of the film but also because this is a periodic bilayer of periodicity d periodicity d d equal to d1 plus d2 if i may say i should also get a bragg peak satisfying 2d sin theta equal to n lambda in this case i can see only one bragg peak the kezik oscillations and the critical angle so from this we can fit and get the structural information including the magnetic moment density in the nickel layers the interface roughnesses and the magnetic structures so but now the case is that how do we calculate the reflectivity or how to fit the reflectivity profile for a periodic bilayer or periodic material or a single film or a bilayer or any thin film structure that you want to study or we have studied so i have talked to about ridgeveld fitting regarding crystalline structure so there in ridgeveld refinement we start with a assumed structure of the crystalline solid and then keep refining that till we come to a model which fits my experimental data then i discussed to you about uh, liquid and amorphous solid there also we start with a model structure three dimensional model and uh, then we kept modifying it till we got a good fit with the experimental data so basically i am always starting with a model in our space in real space space then find out the experimental data in q space and for all the experimental points and then i so this is the model for ith point and then compare it with the experimental data square them sum over i with some constants and i chi square so i always start in the real space produce the data or rather the data that corresponds to the model in q space and then compare it with the experimental data and try to reduce the error the error bar here also we go to the similar exercise but here to generate the reflectivity pattern of a layer structure we use parrot's formalism this is a very robust formalism introduced by parrot together with the possibly the first most famous reported data which i mentioned earlier of extra reflectometry and the parrot's formalism can be equally applied to x rays and neutrons to generate the reflectivity pattern of a model layer structure so the the model layer structure it looks somewhat like this you have a substrate on which you grow your film can be bilayer or it can be single layer it can be aperiodic it can be trilayer whatever and any layer is signified by its thickness in this case and how do you evaluate the reflectivity profile of a film with n layers so i'll briefly introduce you to parrot's formalism so earlier i showed you that uh, if i have only one interface if you remember i used e to the power i q z plus r e to the power minus i q z and t e to the power i q to z for the transparent field. Now I have got a number of layers. Number of layers. 
So I have to do the same exercise layer by layer. So now let me consider the nth layer and the n minus 1th layer in this multi-layer step. So my layer number is going up as I go inside the I should call the thin film heterostructure. So let me just highlight the n minus 1th and nth layer. So here at this interface I have to do exactly what I did earlier for a single layer. So now let's see uh, I can write if I consider at the center of the layer this is the thickness n minus 1 is there is d n minus 1 thickness and nth layer is d n thickness and at the center of the nth layer I consider there are two parts of the wave function like this one is psi and the one is psi r and n is the suffix talking about the layer that I am discussing. So for such a setup I have to consider this interface and this interface. Now let me just talk about the phase factor This phase factor, because of the psi and psi n, I have assumed at the center of the layer, center of the layer. So, at the nth layer, it is here. So, I have to consider now this phase factor. This is a in the n minus one th layer. It is the psi at the at here, so I have to take this psi forward by e to the power minus i q n d by 2 because it moves d by 2. This phase factor with respect to the center of this layer changes by e to the power minus i q n d by 2, q n minus 1 d n minus 1 by 2, and that I so a n minus 1 equal to e to the power minus i q n minus 1 d n minus 1 divided by 2. So if I go forward this psi n I have to multiply the, the forward propagating uh, forward propagating wave function part, part of wave function there is only z component because x and y component I will ignore here the x z I can consider the reflection plane and I am the things the phase factor is changing only with respect to z so if psi n minus 1 was at the center of the n minus 1 layer I take it forward so it becomes a n minus 1 psi n minus 1 now with this I need to add the reflection amplitude just as I did before so here, so now, but the reflected beam, it has to be brought back. So it will be e to the power plus e to the power i q n minus 1 d n minus 1 minus 2. I will write a n minus 1 inverse psi n minus 1 r. Now consider this layer. I am talking about equality of wave functions at this interface so this becomes equal to a n inverse because here the forward moving wave function here has to be taken backward so i have to do a n minus a n inverse psi n plus a n psi n sorry the reflected part psi n and let me write it clearly in the next page so for equality of the wave function a n minus 1 psi 
n minus 1. Moving forward from the center of n minus 1th layer by distance d by 2 to come to the interface. Plus, the reflected beam inside this layer, I have to bring it backward. At this point, I have to bring it backward by d by 2. So, it becomes a n minus 1 inverse psi n minus 1 r. And that should be equal to, this is the n minus 1th layer, this is the nth layer. So, from the center, now my psi n has to be brought back. So, exactly opposite I have to do. And the reflected beam is anyway moving in this direction inside nth medium. So, this is a n psi n. So, this is for equality of psi. The equality of d psi by dz is, so this is equality of psi and just differentiating ones I get from here a n minus 1 psi n minus 1 into q n minus 1 and just because e to the power i q n minus 1 z it gives you i q n minus 1 and it gives q n so this is from the so this is from psi, this is from the equality of d psi by dz. Where this phase factor basically takes care of propagating the beam from the center of the medium to the interfaces. So with this I have got two equations. Now I know that the reflectivity at the n minus 1 and nth thing uh, beam uh, interface is given by psi n r divided by psi n which is there hidden in this equation. So now I have to solve these two equations to get psi n minus psi n r upon psi n. This is the incident uh, sorry reflected and this is the incident beam. That's what I did at last time. So to solve these two equations I have to just add and subtract them. I am not doing the algebra right here. Rather the results are more interesting. Results are more interesting. So I can write down a parameter r n minus 1 n. This is given by a n minus 1 to the power 4 where a n minus 1 was e to the power minus i q n minus 1 d n minus 1 by 2. So apart from this constant factors to the power 4 means it will be it will be e to the power twice i this. But in that you have r n minus 1 n which is a n square psi n r by r psi n. This is the reflection amplitude if I had only n minus 1 and nth layer because if you remember I derived it for you for a medium which is at the medium infinitely thick medium and air q1 was the q parameter in air and q2 was the wave vector transfer in the medium. So here it is wave vector transfer in n minus 1 layer minus wave vector transfer in the nth layer. So, it is similar to this. So, this is one parameter f n comma n minus 1 and this is the reflectivity parameter r n minus 1 comma n. But I have solved it but I have a problem here. You see this is a recursion formula for r where I can go from layer to layer and keep calculating r n minus 1 n and then by squaring I can get the re scattered uh, reflected intensity. But interestingly to get r n minus 1 n I need r n comma n plus 1. So that means to get the reflected intensity at the interface of n minus 1 and nth layer I need the reflected amplitude at nth and n plus 1 nth layer. Now that's a problem because I don't and to get the 
reflected intensity or uh, amplitude at the n and n plus 1 -th layer i need the reflection amplitude at n plus 1 and n plus 2 -th layer so how to get rid of this problem and para did made an excellent assumption so to get n n minus 1 i get n into n n, n plus 1 and to ter how to terminate this so what was assumed by Parrot, and even today we do the same thing, whatever enters the substrate, nothing comes back. It goes out from the bottom of the substrate. That means with your film going deep, you have a substrate which is very thick and whatever enters the substrate, nothing goes back. That means at this interface I consider R n n plus 1 equal to 0. I get nothing back from the bottom of the substrate. And now once I put R n n plus 1, n is the large n is the last layer and the substrate. The last layer is the nth layer. Whatever goes inside the substrate, nothing comes back. Once I put it here, I can keep going up and keep calculating the reflected intensity for each and every layer and ultimately I can arrive at the film air interface provided I have made a model in which I have assigned density thickness for each and every layer. So that means now I have got a handle. So, so I have got I can make my sample it can be even a single layer, not need not be a multi-layer, but I can assign, I can break it up into layers and I can assign thickness, density for this layer, even magnetic moment density. So I, I don't see this. so magnetic moment density for each and every layer, and for that I can calculate the thing. At the film air interface, what we measure actually? I take the whole stack and put it in the reflectometry machine instrument and measure the reflected intensity. But assuming that R n n plus 1 equal to 0, that means nothing comes back from the substrate. And with that, I can have a model and I can have a model reflectivity pattern which I can compare with the experiment. So, Parrot formalism allows us to calculate the reflectivity profile for a given multilayer stack with density together with magnetic moment density if it is polarized neutron reflectometry that defined for the layer and now we can try a model solution and then we go back to the same technique what we do for all other diffraction techniques we try to do a tri scale minimization. So I will take up in the next part the data analysis how we do it uh, in the next lecture.